भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय चैप्टर सिक्स कॉन्वर्सेशन बिटवीन नारद एंड व्यासुदेव टेक्स्ट वन सुताऊ बाचा एवं निश्यमा निश्यम्या भगवान देवर्षे जन्म कर्मच भूया पप्रचातम ब्रह्मन व्यासा सत्यवति सुता Translation. Thus, hearing all about Sri Narada's birth and activities. Vyasadeva, the incarnation of God and the son of Satyavati, inquired as follows. The text two. Vyasa uvacha, bhikshu bir vi pravasi te vignana destra bhistava vartamano vayashadye tathakim akarod bhavan. Translation. Shri Vyasadeva said, "What did you, Narada, do after the departure of the great sages who had instructed you in scientific transcendental knowledge before the beginning of your present birth?" Text three. Swayam bhuva kaya vritya vartitam te param baya katham chedam udasrakshi. Kale prapte kale varam. Translation. O oh, son of Brahma, how did you pass your life after initiation? And how did you attain this body, having quit your old one in due course? Text four. Prakalpa vishayametam smritim te muni satama. Translation. O oh, great sage, time annihilates everything in due course. So how is it that this subject matter, which happened prior to this day of Brahma, is still fresh in your memory, undisturbed by time? Text five. Narada uvacha. भिक्षु बीर वे प्रवासी ते विज्ञादास्ते बीर मामा वर्तमानो व्यास्या दे तथा एतद् अकार्श रशम। Translation. <laughs> As said, the great sages who had imparted scientific knowledge of transcendence to me departed for other places, and I had to pass my life in this way. Text six. Translation. I was the only son of my mother, who was not only a simple woman, but a maid servant as well. Since I was her only offspring, she had no other alternative for protection. She bound me with a tie of affection. Text seven. Saspatantra na kalpa sid yoga kshema mame chati isa shahi vase loko yosa daru mayi yatha. Translation. She wanted to look after my maintenance properly. But because she was not independent, she was not able to do anything for me. The world is under the full control of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, everyone is like a wooden doll in the hands of a puppet master. Text eight. Aham chatat brahma kule, usivam stad upekshaya, digde shakalav yutpano. Balaka Panchahayanaha. Translation. When I was a mere child of five years, I lived in a Brahmana school. I was dependent on my mother's affection and had no experience of different lands. Text 
text 9. Ekada nirgatam gehat dohantim nishigampati sarpodashat padas prishtaha kripanam kalakoditaha. Translation. Once upon a time, my poor mother, when going out one night to milk a cow, was bitten on the leg by a serpent, influenced by supreme time. Text 10. Tada tad aham ishasya bhaktanam sham abhipsataha anugraham manyamanaha prahit praktistham disham uttaram. Translation. I took this as the special mercy of the Lord, who always desires benediction for his devotees. And so thinking, I started for the north. Text 11. Spihitan janaptam satra pura grama vrajagaran kheta karvata vatischa vanyani upavanani cha. Translation. After my departure, I passed through many flourishing metropolises, towns, villages, animal farms, mines, agricultural lands, valleys, flower gardens, nursery gardens, and natural forests. Text 12. Chitra dhatu vichitra drin, ibha bhagna bhujadruman, jala sayan chiva jalan, Nalini Sura Sevita Chitra Svane Pratarate Vibramad Brahmara Shriya. Translation I passed through hills and mountains full of reservoirs of various minerals like gold, silver, and copper, and through tracts of land with reservoirs of water filled with beautiful lotus flowers, fit for the denizens of heaven decorated with bewildered bees and singing birds. Text 13. Nala venu sharastan va kusha kicha kaghavaram eka evati yatoham adraksham vipinam mahat ghoram pratibhayakaram vyaloluka shivarjiram Translation. I then passed alone through many forests of rushes, bamboo, reeds, sharp grass, weeds, and caves, which were very difficult to go through alone. I visited deep, dark, and dangerously fearful forests, which were the play yards of snakes, owls, and jackals. Text 14. Pareshra tendriyat maham. Tratparito bhuvuksitaha Snatva pitva harede nadya Upashprishto katashramaha Translation. Thus traveling, I felt tired, both bodily and mentally, and I was both thirsty and hungry. So I took a bath in a river lake and also drank water. By contacting water, I got relief from my exhaustion. Text 15. Tasmin Nirman Jew, Tasmin Nirman Yujir and Ye, Pipalo Pasta Ashritaha, Atman Atmanam Antmastam, Yatha Shrutam Achintayam. Translation. After that, under the shadow of the Banyan tree in an uninhabited forest, I began to meditate upon the super soul situated within using my intelligence, as I had learned from liberated souls. Text 16. Dhyayatas charanam bhojam bhavanijita chetasa otantya shrukalaksasya hride ashin misanir harahi. Translation. As soon as I began to meditate upon the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead, with my mind transformed in transcendental love, tears rolled down my eyes, and without delay, the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, appeared on the lotus of my heart. Text 17. Premati bhara nirbhina pula kangoti nirvitaha 
आनंद संप्लवेलिनो नापस्यम उभयम मुने मुने ट्रांसलेशन ओ वियासुदेव एट दैट टाइम बीइंग एक्सीडिंगली ओवरपावर्ड बाय फीलिंग्स ऑफ हैप्पीनेस एवरी पार्ट ऑफ माय बॉडी बिकेम सेपरेटली एनलाइवेंट बीइंग एब्सॉर्ब्ड इन एन ओशन ऑफ एक्सटेसी आई कुड नॉट सी बोथ माय सेल्फ एंड द लॉर्ड टेक्स्ट 18 रूपम भगवत यन मन का सुचापहम अपस्यन सहस्ते वैकल्यवधुर्मन इव ट्रांसलेशन द ट्रांसेंडेंटल फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड एज इट इज सेटिस्फाइड द माइंड डिसायर एंड दैट वंस इरेसेस ऑल मेंटल इनकंग्रुइटीज अपॉन लूजिंग दैट फॉर्म आई सडनली गॉट अप बीइंग परटर्ब्ड as is usual when one loses that which is desirable text 19 vidrukshas tad aham bhuya pranidhaya manohidi vikshamano pinapasyam avitprita evatura translation i desired to see again that transcendental form of the lord but despite my attempts to concentrate upon the heart with eagerness to view the form again i could not see him any more and thus dissatisfied i was very much aggrieved hari krishna thank you thank you so much hari krishna that was wonderful thank you thank you for the opportunity to reply thank you hari krishna i was wondering i was i was seeing only one speaker so i was wondering why i can't see the other in the sense that you know the name would come up and then i realize now that you both are together that's wonderful really oh, yeah. nice it's such a husband and wife recitation um, yes wonderful really nice thank you so much um okay jyoti mata ji thank you for that that was a well needed break i should say no worries <laughs> mata ji you don't need to thank no worries thank you okay now let me just see where i have my today has been quite a mad day actually okay all right just give me one minute and i'll share my screen it's very strange i can't see my powerpoint anywhere Screen. Sorry, bear with me for a minute. Here we are. Yeah. I think now you all can see. Yes, Mataji. Okay. So today we are on chapter six, which is the conversation between <clears throat> Narad Muni and Vyasa Dev. Before we start, uh, let's say our prayers. नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर शृण्वत स्वकथा कृष्ण पुण्याश्रवन कीर्तना हृदय तास्थयो अभद्रा विदु नोती सुहत्सत नस्त प्राएषु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्तक So today we are on verse five of this particular chapter. Narado vacha, vikshu bir vipravasite, vignya na deshtri bir mama, vartmano vayasya dye, tata edat akarasham. Translation and purport by Sri La Propa, Sri La Propa Diki Jai. Translation. Hmm. Sri Narad said the great sages who had imparted scientific knowledge of transcendence to me departed for other places and i had to pass my life in this way i'll read the purport since it is very small in his previous life when narad ji was impregnated with spiritual knowledge by the grace of the great sages there was a tangible change in his life although he was only a boy of 5 years that is an important symptom visible after initiation 
by the bona fide spiritual master. Actual association of devotees brings about a quick change in life for spiritual realization. How it so acted upon the previous life of Sri Narad Muni is described by and by in this chapter. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakar Patrubescha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadigaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata De Shatarine Okay, so um, very important verse, very short purport by Prabhupada, but uh, in this short purport, Prabhupada has given us some very important instructions. And let us see while we are discussing whether, you know, we can get these instructions and then obviously apply it and follow it. So the first thing uh, Prabhupada is talking about is what spiritual knowledge does? What is the purpose of spiritual knowledge? So spiritual knowledge actually is meant to discover and experience the very essence of our existence. The whole thing about spirituality is to understand who am I? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? But once I understand this uh, essence, then it is also my duty to share this wealth with everybody else. So um, uh, Prabhupada quotes this, that the human form of life is meant for developing love of God. You know, that is the only purpose of the human form of life. Um, the spirit soul can be happy only in the association of the supreme living being, the personality of Godhead, and nowhere else. Srila Prabhupada quotes this in the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam 3.2.11. So in this particular verse, also in the purport, Prabhupada is talking about actually a tangible change that happened in Narad Muni once he had associated with the sages. So you will listen to a lot of this story in the um, following verses. So I don't want to go too deeply into the story, but Vyasadev is asking various questions in the previous verses. And in this particular verse in the purport, Prabhupada is talking about the tangible change that has come into Narad Muni after he has associated with the sages and after he had gained some kind of spiritual understanding. Now, when I was reading this, I was thinking, um, all of us are associating with Srimad Bhagavatam and previously with Bhagavad Gita. Would a few of you like to uh, you know, say do you notice a tangible change in yourself or in people around you who have been associating with the scriptures and, of course, with other devotees? Would any of you like to, you know, if you've seen a tangible change in yourself, would you like to share? Anybody? Don't be shy. We all know each other quite well now. Mataji, repeat the question again, please. The question Sorry. that I'm asking is, so in this purport, you know, I'm trying to relate the purport to our own life. So in the purport, Prabhupada says that 
there was a tangible change in Narad Muni after he had had some kind of spiritual knowledge. So what my question is that we have been running these chat sessions for almost two years now. We uh, tried to study the Bhagavad Gita, we're studying the Bhagavatam, we are associating with devotees. Do any of you feel any tangible change in yourselves after associating with the scriptures? Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Um, yes, I want to share my feelings. Uh -huh. um, once I came into Krishna consciousness and started to listen to Gita first, and now I'm listening to um, Bhagavatam. Yeah. Um, I just feel like uh, first thing, fearless. I have no fear because my belief is going um, that whatever Krishna wants is going to happen is happening just like that. Mm -hmm. So I feel fearless. And the other thing is all my attention, which used to be like, I used to listen to Sunrise Radio a lot. Mm. Obviously there is some good stuff as well, but now I don't feel like mm, putting it on. And if I ever do it, it feels like noise to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like listening to um, like obviously chat session as well as uh, some other uh, other um, meetings like Lal Govind uh, selectors on this and um, other religious things. So I just feel like very much contented and uh, feel stronger inside. So that's what my change I feel. That's very good, Seema Mataji. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Mataji, I... Yes, Sandrata Mataji. Sorry, Mataji, I could be here for half an hour. <laughs> I won't give you that much time, Namrata Mataji. I know, Mataji. So I'll be very quick. <laughs> Mataji, I, I, I think one of the main thing I feel is I feel very happy. Right. And what I mean by happy is every single thing that happens in my life, I just feel happy. I feel like um, uh, ecstasy. Um, so there was a time I, I was like a, a gym freak, right? I still go to the gym every single day, mm. but instead of always listening to music, it's all changed. I want to listen to the okay. class that happens seven o'clock in the morning. So, you know, all this, those stuff has changed. Um, and you also see things very differently before when they, I, mean, I know this is the silliest thing ever, but if there was a spider or anything, you know, we would, <laughs> we would hoover it up. Mm. Now I'm terrified to harm even anybody you just terrified in the sense why would you do that they're all krishnas so there's this big change from that perspective as well mataji i could keep going mataji but i'll give somebody yes, else a chance good. no thank you for sharing namrata mataji it's so important to kind of because especially when this purport proka is saying that you know there was a tangible change and it really got me thinking that you know all of us also see in spiritual life his holiness sachinandan maharaj says that Every time and again, you must take a, you know, a, a, a kind of like, look at yourself, where you were, where you're now, where you want to go. You know, it's very important to do that. Like we do it in our material lives. We need to do that in spiritual life. So it was, I thought it was a nice kind of question to ask all of you. And I'm, I'm glad you all are sharing. We could probably take one more devotee if they would like to share something. If not, then Hare Krishna. I would like to share my um yes um there is a change in myself that i used to watch a lot of um tv in the evening but now i look forward to the chat groups meetings and i just don't want to miss any of them and when we do sit down and i think what rubbish is coming on tv let's all go to sleep or read <laughs> bhagavatam at least one or two chat uh, tracks and understand that's the change I've Brilliant. seen in myself. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And on chat, we have another devotee who shared that she agrees with what Seema Mataji has said. So see, we can, we ourselves are seeing how um, spiritual knowledge is bringing about a tangible change in each one of us. So then we can, we are, you know, in, in a sense, we're putting ourselves in Naramuni's place. I'm not saying we're becoming that, but I'm just saying that this is what Prabhupada is talking about, that there was a tangible change in Narad Muni after he gained some spiritual knowledge. So, you know, like spiritual knowledge is where the awakening or the questions should come to us that, you know, uh, who am I? Why am I here? 
what is the quality of my life at the time of death? What is going to happen to me? Where am I going to go? These are the questions that one should be asking. And while we're in the material world, realizing that this is a temporary place. So like Seema Mataji said, you know, there should be no fear because why are you fearful? Krishna is controlling everything, you know, and like Namrata Mataji and Indira Mataji said that now the, the songs that one used to listen to is almost like noise. Uh, the TV shows that we would watch was, seems like a waste of time. So these are all tangible changes that we can see in each one of us, right? So spiritual knowledge is meant to discover and experience the very essence of our existence and then to share this wealth of real love with humanity. So like I said in the beginning also, now that you are experiencing this fearlessness, happiness, understanding that this world is temporary, then it becomes our duty to share it with everybody else. Because like Namrata Mataji said that now when she sees the spiders, she thinks that each and every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. And the human being has been given the intelligence that I want to share what I am experiencing, the happiness, the ananda that I have, the fearlessness. So I want to distribute this knowledge. And what better way than to actually distribute the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam is none other than Krishna himself. So all of us, each and every single one of us should actually be taking it upon ourselves that, you know, we must think of how I can bring this knowledge to everybody so that everybody is happy. Each and everybody is happy. And especially it's the human form of life where we have the intelligence. Srila Prabhupada, in one of his letters, he says, otherwise, what is the difference between us and the dogs? The dogs are running on four uh, legs and we are running on four wheels from here to there just to satisfy our senses. But once we understand that I'm actually not this body and these senses will never be satisfied no matter what I do, then you move on to the next platform understanding, okay, if I'm not this body, then who am I and what is my responsibility, my duty? Um, so now I was just doing like a comparison of material life and spiritual life. Um, as we all can see, there has been so much of advancement in material life, in science. And obviously all of it is there to improve the condition of life within this world, to improve the standard of living that we have. You know, and... It has affected our day-to-day -day life. All of us experience it. I remember um, when I was growing up, I grew up in Bombay, India, but uh, my ancestral village or where my parents were born is in a remote place in Bihar. And I used to visit there every year during our uh, vacation. And in those times, uh, Bihar still is probably one of the least developed states in India. And at those times, it was really, really bad. Like we didn't have electricity. And I remember if I had to travel from my father's place to my mother's place, we had to go by a bullock cart, literally a bullock cart, which would take forever. It was hot and sunny. I remember we used to tie like bed sheets over the bullock cart, you know, over some like bamboo, you know, uh, bamboo like rods that we would kind of put. And then slowly it progressed from a bullock cart with wooden wheels to like, a bullock cart still, but at least it had the tires like the ones that you have in the cars. So it was a little bit uh, better, you know, and obviously today we've got, you know, bikes and cars and, you know, we've got electricity and we've got uh, mobile phones and, you know, air conditioners and everything. So things have progressed. Science has advanced so much that it is able to um, improve our uh, standard of living. You know, um, I also remember that uh, my father used to be uh, working in the merchant navy. So he would be gone for long periods of time, nine months at a stretch. And in those days, the only way of contact was letters or if there was some urgency, then telegrams. Not everybody had even landline phones in their houses. And if my father had to contact us, he would first call whoever our neighbors and say, could you go and call them, you know, and then we would go and stay at their, sit at their place waiting for my father to call and then he would call. So it was 
you know, it was like that. And today at the touch of a button, you've got FaceTime where you almost, you feel like as if you are in that city, wherever your loved ones are. So, you know, science has really uh, progressed. Obviously, we also see the, the downside where, you know, the advancement has helped. Um, it has kind of become a cause for terrible suffering also within the world because the power, if it goes to the wrong, in the wrong hands, then, you know, things can go wrong. Anyways, that is not our topic of uh, discussion. What I was trying to get to is that in order to come to this stage of progression that science has made, there has been training. People have gone to schools. People have gone to colleges. People have gone to, um, you know, study under authority. You have to take training from somebody who knows it. There's been like proper education by people who've already studied it. There are professors, they teach us. Then we have our own realizations. We have our own experiences. However, when it comes to spirituality, for some reason, people become drastically unscientific. Like how scientific knowledge has to be gained through proper channels, spirituality also has to be gained through proper channels. For some reason, especially in India, people seem to think that they know everything about spirituality. You know, I know God, I know this is how it is. I believe the truth is so and so. I think God is like this. It is all about what I think or what I feel. Why is it that here everybody is given an open forum to say, this is how God is. This is what the absolute truth is. This is what spirituality is. When in our material life, you are only taken seriously if you have got the proper qualification. So same way. In spiritual life also, one has to attend um, colleges and universities, not in that sense, but get the knowledge from authoritative sources. We've got our scriptures, we've got our acharyas, we've got senior devotees, and that is where we can get the knowledge from. And in the purport, Prabhupada actually is talking about this, where he says, I'll read this. Um, that is an important symptom visible after initiation by the bona fide spiritual master. So he is talking about the importance of taking shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. And some, for some reason, whenever we talk about uh, taking shelter of a guru, or sadhu, you know, a lot of negative thoughts come in the mind. And one has to understand that if for material um, progress, you need professors, you need textbooks, you need bona fide universities teaching you those courses, then for spirituality, if you really truly want to get the spiritual knowledge, then you have to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. And Srila Prabhupada quotes, any person who is seriously desirous of achieving real happiness must seek out a bona fide spiritual master and take shelter of him by initiation. Right? So we know that, you know, the physical sciences have been understood through theory, through, um, through experiments and through, you know, various kind of uh, practical results. But when we talk about the source of life, or questions about truth, then we have to look within and we have to search for authorities who have found these answers. We have questions, where do we go to look for the answers? So our scriptures is telling us in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying, Ye yatha mam prapadyante tam sataiva maham. So as one approaches me, that is the way I reveal myself. So we know that, you know, there are scriptures, there are teachers who can teach us this. So then the question comes about faith. You know, why should I have faith? Why should I believe this? What we fail to realize is 99.99% .99 of us have faith in something or the other. Let's take an example. 
when you're a child and you learn to walk and your parents are encouraging you to walk, you have the faith that when you lift up your leg to put it in front, your second leg is going to support the weight of your body. That is the faith that you have, which tells you that, yes, I can lift one leg up. If you didn't have that faith, you wouldn't do it ever. And a child would never learn to walk, right? I've given this example before where I've said that we talk about a geographical place, like, you know, in geography, we study about countries. When we're at school and we're studying geography, we study about various countries. We study about weather. We, we've read about Antarctica and Arctica and whatever else. How many of us have actually physically visited these places? But we have faith. We have faith in these texts. We have faith in the authorities of the people who have probably visited these places. And we take their word for it. That is faith. You know, so same way, when we, when we approach this science, spiritual science, which is actually beyond the capacity of our mind and senses, so the only way we can understand it is by having faith. So we have to have faith in the scriptures. We have to have faith in the authorities who are speaking from the scriptures and nothing else, not giving their own interpretation, right? And that is how we will then develop this spiritual knowledge and we will be able to then see the change that this knowledge brings about in us. If we don't have faith, then there will be no change. Like some of the devotees who shared what they have seen, it's because they have believed in what they are hearing. They have believed in what they are reading. That is why they have changed their life. If you didn't believe in it, you would read it like a novel or like a storybook or like something that has happened, you know, 500 years, 5,000 years back, doesn't happen to us. So I'm not going to listen to it, right? But it is this faith. And this faith comes when we are willing to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master who is actually, whose only desire in life is to bring us to the level of actual understanding of who I am and what will give me permanent happiness. The spiritual master does not desire for anything else. He does not want any name, fame, glory, money, he doesn't want all that. There was one, um, Srila Prabhupada's, um, once he was traveling in the car, yeah, this was in America, and he was traveling with a few of his disciples, and he had tears in his eyes when he was traveling. And the disciples asked, Prabhupada, why are you crying? And he said, I'm looking at all these people on the street. They are so busily running here and there, you know, and and it's almost like, you know, they, they can't think of anything else except, you know, getting from point A to point B. And I'm, I'm, I feel bad for them. I feel how they are wasting their life because life is not about this. So this is the uh, quality of a bona fide spiritual master. And then in the final um, statement that Prabhupada is making in the purport, he says that, Actual association of devotees brings about a quick change in life for spiritual realization. So again, here in a letter Prabhupada is writing, the association of devotees is the most important element in learning Krishna consciousness way of life. By association with undesirable companions, we have learned so many bad habits. And similarly, by association with pure persons or devotees, we can become purified of our acquired bad habits. So Prabhupada here is stressing the importance of association of devotees, which he does so many places. In one of the lectures, the analogy that um, I, I believe it is Prabhupada who uses this analogy, that when it rains, you know, the rainfall, the, the water that's in the rain is absolutely uh, clean, pure, fresh. Now, depending on where it falls, you see, if it falls in a contaminated, stagnant place, then that water will take, will become like that, dirty, impure. But if it falls on, in, in a river, flowing water, 
then that rain water is also clear, pure, like the river water. So what actually happened here when the rain, when the rainfall was coming, it was pure. It was the association that changed the quality of the water. And that is what happens with us. The association makes the difference. If we associate with the wrong kind of people, with the wrong kind of things, then we take on those qualities. And thus, for us neophyte devotees who are just starting out on our spiritual journey, association with more advanced devotees is very, very important. So I'll just um, summarize this uh, today's verse. So in summary, what the verse and what Prabhupada is talking about in his purport is, as soon as you get spiritual understanding and spiritual knowledge, there is a tangible change in you. And you can see it and feel it, like how there was a change in Narad Muni. The second point that Prabhupada is stressing about is that how it is important to get spiritual understanding from authoritative sources, not from anybody. Unfortunately, everybody has their own ideas of spirituality, of what spiritualism is, of what God is, how I can reach God. Everybody's got their own ideas. We have to be intelligent, careful to choose who the authorities are who can actually guide us. And the third point that Robad is stressing on in the purport is about association with devotees. If we don't associate with devotees, then our spiritual knowledge will become stagnant. You may have the knowledge, but you won't know how to apply it, how to use it, and it will become stagnant. It will not become dynamic. It is only with the association of devotees serving together, listening to Krishna Katha together, that the knowledge that you acquire, actually, you can then apply it in your life. So association of devotees is so important. So this is the summary of the verse. I hope uh, this satisfies you all. If there are any questions or comments, please, um, you can unmute yourselves and uh, ask the questions. No questions, no comments. Um, Hare Krishna, Mataji. Yes, Namrata Mataji. Uh, Mataji, thank you so much. I mean, how wonderfully explained. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mataji. It was a very clear session. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so Mataji, I mean, this exactly this what happened to me at the weekend. I was out at my family. We were 30, 40 people. And uh, I try to sometimes listen more now than, than actually talk. It's nice to listen everybody's viewpoint. And then it came to a point where I said, um, I, I exactly said the same thing that, you know, this, everything is written in the scriptures. We need to just sit down and, uh, and read it. It's, it's our Bhagavad Gita, etc. What some of, and, and it's, I didn't want it to be a bit, bit of a debate or anything, but it seems like some of the same people, all they would say is, well, if you have faith in something, why would you want to question it and go and read it? Because I have faith mm -hmm. that all the God is the same. You pray to anybody. And then it, and then <laughs> what I don't want is, Mataji, is my faith, which is never going to go down. But I don't want to be in that debate. So what do you do in those type of situation? Because I, I tried, I, I tried giving them all chanting ba bead bags. I gave them all Bhagavad Gita, everything I tried. But then what do you do in those type of situations? Okay, so our Acharyas and Srila Prabhupada says that for us especially who are neophyte devotees, whose understanding of the scriptures is not that at that level where we need to debate or try to do whatever. Um, and also what we have to understand is that, see, everybody's journey is different. Maybe you have progressed to, let's say you're on a, on a, on a ladder going from the ground floor to the first floor. You are on the fourth step, fourth rung of the ladder. Somebody else is on the first rung. Now, if you try to pull the person up, it might hurt the person's hand, right? So yeah. what we have to understand is that this is another thing about spirituality, that 
you be compassionate to where they are at right they may be at that level and that is all right yes, yes. it is my duty to you know preach which i will do but if they are closed and if they feel that i'm happy with where i am i have the faith and i know that doing this is also the same thing that's fine prabhupad says there is a plane ticket which you know you can get a direct flight from london to bombay so you will reach in 9 hours or there is a flight ticket where actually you can go to uh, to let's say to turkey stop over for 3 days then you go to the middle east stop there for a couple of days and then another place stop there and then come to bombay you will eventually reach bombay no doubt about that no doubt but you choose are you going to go direct or are you going to take the long winding way so if some people are at that stage where they are still happy with where they you know they want to take the long winded route that's fine that's all right okay thank you mata ji hari krishna anybody else okay uh i i notice after i've come back after the break that people have gone quite very quiet on this forum earlier we used to have quite a lot of discussions i quite enjoyed the discussions i hope we go back to that soon but um thank you very much for joining and i hope you all are satisfied with this verse um it is a very interesting verse actually a very short purport but very uh, important instructions for all of us so thank you for joining hopefully i shall see you all next week uh, again panchakalpatrubhash kripa sindhu bevaj patita nam pavane pyo vaishnave pyo namo koti vaishnav rinde ki jay shri krishna hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna mata ji thank you for the lovely class thank you mata ji thank you mata ji thank you hari krishna hari krishna mata ji thank you my my mata ji